Okay, so we're trying to prove a limit using the epsilon delta theorem. Let's execute that game plan. First thing we're going to do is we're going to identify. This is the second example on this. An easier example was presented earlier. This is a more harder one. Oh my gosh, my English is so good. <coughs> oh, too much chalk. One, this is um, x minus 2. Why? Because it's x minus a. That's the guy that I wanted to identify. Why? Because I'm looking for him. If you see him, tell him I'm looking for him. It's part two. I evaluate my function minus my limit. Ooh, the absolute value of x to the third minus eight. Great. So at first you don't know what to do with that, but then you're like, hold up. Wait, that's the difference of cubes, and it follows the rule of soap. If you want to see some factoring videos, go and look those up. Ready, 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 ready. X minus 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 4. Oh, where those are the same, opposite, always positive. Now the absolute value of a product is the product of the absolute values. Absolute. Absolutely. So I'm going to write it out like this. This is the absolute value of... Wait for it. Wait for it. x squared plus 2x plus 4 times the absolute value of x minus 2. Oh. Now take a look at that, man. We found what we were looking for. We found an x minus 2, but what are we going to do with that one? Head scratcher, wait. Now, my delta is small, okay? Delta's small, why? Because we're looking for, uh-huh, those changes. I'm sure your instructor let you know about that. Delta is small, so it's safe to assume that delta is smaller than one. So then, let's just, for the sake of this problem, choose um, a delta to equal one. Okay, so then, we have that the absolute value of x minus 2 is going to be smaller than 1. Now this is an absolute value inequality, and there was a reason they had you do that back in pre-calc and intermediate algebra and college algebra, so that now we can do it here. This is minus 1 is smaller than x minus 2, which is smaller than 1. Okay. Finish him. Add 2 to everything. So now I have 1 is smaller than mm -hmm, x, which is smaller than mm -hmm, 2. Nuh-uh. Because 1 plus 2 is 3. Yes. Now that we have that guy, let's see our bound on this function. So then I have x plus 2, x plus 4. Now, if this is our function, notice something about this function. That's a plus and that's a plus. If we were to draw, we would see that it would be increasing. So this is legitimate to do this. We're trying to get a bound on this. And I know my x is in between 1 and 3. So here we go. Let's, 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 let x equal 1. So then this is 1 squared plus 2 times 1 plus 4. That's not a 21. It's like that. So this is 4, and 2 is 6, and then that's 7. All right, well, let's let it be our other bound. Let's be a 3, because we know x be in between 1 and 3, and this is increasing. I suppose we should have probably showed that, but it's a parabola opening up, shifted left to, shifted down, shifted up to. Okay, how did I do that? I completed the square in my head. So then, let's let x equal 3. So then we go and we put that in there. This is 3 squared plus 2 times 3 plus 4. Oh, finish him. 9 and 6, 15. And 4 is 19. So now would it be safe to say, well, I'm going to say it anyway, that this function, mm -hmm, x squared plus 2x plus 4, that's going to be bigger than 7 and smaller than 19. Now, is it safe to say that the absolute value of x squared plus 2x plus 4 is going to be smaller than 19, since that's its upper bound on our interval anyway? Yeah! So now we get to choose our c. So we found our c, c. Our c is 19. So 
If we look at this here, whew, it's getting hot in here. All this moving around upstairs in the summer. <sighs> Ready? So then delta uh -huh, is either one or the minimum of one and epsilon over that C, which is 19. Okay, see, now it's time for our summary, see. We have our delta. We have two conditions on it. We've bounded it one time by one, and then the other time by epsilon over 19. So now, let's write it up. On over here, wow. Whew. Gonna need a break after this one. Ready, 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 ready? If, this is step four, if, the absolute value of x minus 2 is smaller than this delta, then our limit, or not our limit, our function minus our limit, consider that. This is going to be x to the third minus 8. Great. And then that's equal to the absolute value of x squared plus 2x plus 4 times the absolute value of x minus 2. But we have previously bounded that in our notes to be smaller than 19. So that's when this becomes smaller than 19 times x minus 2. Oh which is still smaller than 19 times. That was our delta. Well, this was smaller than delta, so this is smaller than that. So this is smaller than delta, but we had a choice choice of delta, and that's equal to 19 times epsilon over 19. Hey, right. And we have just shown if the absolute value of x minus 2 is smaller than delta, then the function minus the limit is absolutely smaller than epsilon. Bam, bam, bam. Oh. Box and flower. It's freaking hot in here. This flower's on fire. Yes. Woo. This one time in math class. This one time in math class. Real stories from the classroom.